Yo guys, what is up? Max in our first Descendant video, and today we are updating my Descendant tier list video. Uh, I put out a Descendant tier list on launch, um, and it was kind of my impressions from the beta going in. I now have over 400 hours in the game, and we just got our first major patch where we got balance changes, so I don't think we're going to be getting too many balance changes to the characters until Season 1, where I'll probably update my tier list again. Once again, before we get into the tier list, these are for fun, and these are my opinion. Your opinion can be very different. You can prefer a character over one. Uh, these are just my impressions and my opinions on not only where the characters rank up for mobbing, but also for bossing, and then we're going to do an overall tier list. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and once again, just for fun, um, and let's get right into it. So our very first tier list is going to be just for mobbing. Uh, this is for farming out in the world, for farming gold, farming Kuiper, farming dungeons, who are the characters that you want to take into these farms to get the most gold, the most Kuiper, and do it the most uh, fastest and most efficiently? Um, and so for the list, uh, you may have noticed that we have a bunny tier. Uh, we're just going to put bunny there to start. Uh, there isn't another character in the game who really rivals bunny's clear speed uh, when it comes to just pretty much all the content in the game. Uh, she is very much in her own tier. Uh, she hits for millions of damage. She can clear dungeons without ever shooting her gun. She can sprint unlimitedly. Uh, she can cover an entire radius, an entire map with her damage. And just, she is the strongest AoE character uh, in the game right now, bar none. Eugen, we've got in A tier. Uh, Eugen has a transcendent module called Proliferating Allergy that allows him to do 1,000 skill damage on a four second cooldown that proliferates to the entire room of enemies. Uh, if you haven't seen what Eugen can do in mobbing, I have a build guide for him. I promise you're probably sleeping on him uh, with a pistol and you shoot it at one mob, you will clear all of the mobs around him. The radius on it is disgusting. And once again, it's a 1000 damage uh, multiplier uh, just on a four second cooldown that he applies to ads uh, right now because of like the meta just being instant deleting things. Uh, he's actually pretty good at mobbing. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Next up, we've got Ajax. Ajax, we're going to be putting in B tier. Ajax has really low cooldowns on his abilities. They don't hit quite as hard as like something one like Eugen, uh, but he's got really low cooldowns. He's great at skill spamming, uh, and he's actually a pretty good mobber. It's, he gets also bonus points for the fact that you can build Ajax really tanky, so you're, nothing's really ever going to be killing you. Uh, he doesn't have the highest damage, and he can't build into crit, uh, but in terms of just killing trash mobs, he's actually pretty good. Next up, we've got Luna. Uh, we're also going to be putting Luna in B tier. Uh, Luna has a pretty good AoE. Uh, you can build it into crit pretty easily. Her gameplay personally isn't for me, uh, but she is good at mobbing. The big issue with Luna right now is she's kind of slow, uh, where like Ajax and a lot of these other characters that we're talking about and talking about well uh, for mobbing, Luna is kind of stuck moving at a set speed where she just can't keep up with some of the best mobbers. Um, and so that's why we've got her in B tier. Um, next up, we've got Viesa. Viesa is currently in S tier. Uh, Viesa has so many different mobbing builds that are all excellent. She's got absolute zero to sprint around and hit enemies for 500,000 damage with her Frost Trail. She's got Cold Snap Watch, which can leave permanent AoE damage uh, that will clear enemies before they can even spawn. She's got Cold Bloodness Skill Spam, where you can use her four ability on a six to seven second cooldown. Uh, which is one of the strongest abilities right now uh, for mobbing. Uh, she is just really good, and she's really good in the specific meta of this game right now, which is like spawn camping ads, uh, which she is just great at. Next up, we've got Sharon. Now, Sharon is really good at hitting a few enemies really hard. Uh, you can get her one to hit for multiple millions of damage. She's just not really great at hitting like a lot of enemies at a time. And if you put on her augment on her one, that makes it hit a bunch of enemies at a time. You lose like 500% of your damage, which makes it feel really bad. Um, and so we're going to be putting Sharon in D tier. Sharon, really good at certain things. High damage to single targets. She's great at, and we'll talk about bossing soon, but for, like, mobbing, just not a great mobbing character, in my opinion. Next up, we've got Jaber. Uh, Jaber we're going to be putting in C tier. Jaber can get some assault turrets that you can, like, AFK with. Uh, his turrets can be built, so they kind of, like, kill enemies as they're spawning. Um, however, those turrets are very stationary, and right now, you know, a lot of the times you're moving or enemies, you have to reposition. Uh, I just don't rate him overly highly in the current meta. 
Um, but I think he definitely could have a place, uh, you know, depending on if like we get really hard defense missions. Right now, all of the defense missions, the way that they are at, are all very easy defense missions. Um, so once again, I, I think this character could see a lot more play just in current meta right now. Not overly important. Um, next up, we've got Lepic. Lepic, we're going to be putting in our A tier uh, over Eugen. Uh, Lepic. I think is slept on as a mobber. Uh, he is the only character in the game uh, that has like an infinite range on one of his abilities. Uh, you can use his three on like a five to six second cooldown to pull in an entire map. Um, it is disgusting. You can group enemies like no other. Uh, Valby does have a bit of a grouping ability, but it's still not nearly as strong as Lepix. Um, and he can do really high damage with his grenades and burn damage. The Thunder Cage is one of the best mobbing weapons in the game, and Lepic can pull in all the enemies on the map to uh, hit with his uh, three. It's just pretty strong uh, in the current meta. He's not as needed. That's why I don't put him any higher than he is right now. Uh, but he's undoubtedly very good at what he is good at, which is mobbing. Um, next up, we've got Esimo. Esimo, we're going to put into C tier. Uh, you can set up a build on him where you're rolling, and every two seconds, you're going to be sending out explosives, and you can constantly be detonating those explosives. However, Esimo is just kind of not good in what is like important in this game right now, which is insta-killing things. There's so much time delay between his damage. Uh, the fact that his two is on a cooldown makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, I think this character has potential to be a pretty solid AoE mobber. Just the amount of delay between all of their damage seems just very silly um, and makes them super awkward and kind of unfun to play, in my opinion. Next up, uh, we've got Blair. Now, Blair, we could put in B tier. Um... I think he kind of hovers between B and C tier, honestly. Uh, his uh, his one ability covers a large radius, um, and it can burn enemies, and you can kind of spawn kill. His flamethrower is pretty awkward. You can build it for low, for low cooldown, uh, but you get stuck using it where you're not moving very fast. You can't shoot your guns. Um, his four, unless you're using the augment for it, it is not really worth all that much for mobbing uh but he can buff his guns a fair bit we're gonna put blair in b tier next up we've got glay uh glay has uh currently in terms of a damage ability the largest range in the entire game uh with massive sanguification you can spam out her two in a 36 meter radius and just hit literally everything on the entire map uh it is kind of disgusting you can build it to deal a fair bit of damage it's not going to be doing as much damage as like a uh eugen proliferating allergy uh but the aoe that this hits is kind of disgusting um and it's a little bit slept on um but uh glay massive sanguification with a like full aoe build is arguably one of the stronger mobbers and that's why we've got her in a next up we've got freyna freyna uh we're gonna be putting in b tier as well uh, the issue with Freyna right now, maybe we put her there. The issue with Freyna right now is she's meant to be a mobber. Like, that, that is her kit. Uh, she has lots of AoE, and she's got great range, but she just doesn't quite have the damage. If they just gave her a, a little bit of a damage buff, uh, I think Freyna could be, like, up there with in, easily an A or S tier. Uh, just right now, her dots don't do a lot of damage. They tick very slowly, and they tick like the, she, by the time that she's killing enemies uh any other a mobbing character has already killed the enemies that she's trying to kill uh yes she has amazing range uh, but i just think she just needs a little bit more damage in the dps department um and so that's where we're going to put her at the top of b and then next up we get valby uh valby we're going to be putting at the top of s she is just really good at what she's good at which is covering a massive area in tons of dot uh, she's got better dot multipliers than freyna um she can constantly spam an ability where she has 50 percent dr looping it which covers an entire area and in the current farm meta of this game which is killing enemies before they can spawn or as they're spawning uh she is one of the best for it um she is a fantastic gold farmer uh i would consider bunny valby and viesa to be the top three like gold farmers in the game uh and that is why we're going to put her in s tier next up we've got enzo enzo is a really good gun character he's got good support for his team he gives you lots of ammo but he just doesn't really bring anything in terms of 
AoE damage. Like, yes, he's good with the Thunder Cage, but so is, like, literally every character in the game. Um, and so because he just doesn't really bring anything to mobbing, we're going to be putting him in D tier. And then lastly, we've got Kyle. Uh, Kyle also, tanky character, has a three that he can use to, like, spam explosion damage. Uh, just honestly a little underwhelming for mobbing. I think Ajax is just a better version of Kyle right now. Kyle has the four, which he does a lot of damage with. Uh, but I like Ajax's kit a whole lot more. Uh, we're going to be putting Kyle in D tier as well. Um, and this is our mobbing tier list. Next up, we've got our bossing tier list. Now this is going to be what character can walk into a boss fight and kill the boss the fastest. Um, this is not taking into account specific bosses. This is just bosses in general. So it's not going to be who's the fastest to kill Devour. It's just in general, who is the strongest all around characters when it comes to putting out as much freaking damage as humanly possible. Um, and for this, it's really hard to rate support characters and the value that they bring. Um, so uh, I'm just going to be putting uh, Luna, um, Eugen, and Ajax in support tier. These characters are incredibly powerful when it comes to helping out a team and they should not be undervalued, but it's hard to rate them because they're different on their composition. For example, a Luna and a Freyna or a Luna and a, a Lepic can be the strongest combo possible. But if that Luna joins in and you don't have those characters, you know, there's a lot less synergy that she has. She doesn't bring as much. Um, Eugen and Ajax are also kind of that way where I think Luna has the highest potential as a support, uh, but Eugen's AoE, DP, uh, AoE healing is just disgusting. I got my very first clear on Gluttony, the current hardest boss in the game, playing my Eugen healing build uh, to keep my team alive. Uh, he is just so helpful. There's no there's no time that you're bringing in a Eugen that's not helping out your team. And then Ajax uh, also is a very, very strong uh, support character. Uh, in terms of just keeping your DPSs alive, if you have a Glade that's going like low health, that Ajax can constantly just keep blocking for them and keeping them alive. Um, I'm probably going to technically just lift Eugen slightly over Luna, just because Eugen is always helpful and Luna is conditionally helpful and Ajax is, uh, I think, the worst of those supports. Uh, but that is our support tier there. Next up, we're just going through this randomly. Uh, Sharon, we've got in B tier. Now, Sharon is... Uh, Pretty strong bosser with the right setup. Uh, her, with her, like, sniper build with the afterglow, piercing light, uh, can kill bosses very, very quickly. Uh, Battlesuit Melting Nuts is one of the best transcendent mods in the game right now uh, in terms of stripping enemies' defenses and their electrical resistances. Um, and she's super versatile for a lot of bosses, you know. There's not really a boss that you're taking into with Sharon um, that she's not going to have, like, a decent time with. Uh, but she's just not the strongest of the bossers, um, and that's why we're putting her in B tier right now. Next up, we've got Viesa. Uh, Viesa's also going to be in B tier, uh, kind of a little bit of the opposite, where Viesa's abilities hit really, really hard. Uh, I've gotten her, like, four ability, taking, like, five mil crits on bosses, um, and you can just put them kind of in a blender with ability spam. The big issue with Viesa is it's just ability spam. For example, the last bosses, like Frostwalker and Gluttony, She's just not a character that you'd want to bring for those. So she's a little bit more situational. Um, but she is one of the strongest high damage, uh, like, ability spammers that there is. Uh, so that's why we've got her in B tier. The other thing is her four is just really easy to whiff on. Uh, bosses, if you don't put it down when they're, like, walking. Um, or if they're walking, you put it down. They can literally just walk out of it. A lot of other characters are not whiffing their abilities so easily. Next up, uh, we've got Valby. Uh, we're putting Valby in A tier. Valby AoE debuffs for her entire team just by putting on her dots. Supply Moisture is one of the strongest gun buffs in the game, uh, giving you tons of crit chance. Um, she's There's not a boss that like she's not going to be generally helpful on uh, for not only your team, but also for herself. Uh, and she just brings a lot to the table uh, on bosses, especially when you're pairing her with strong crit weapons. Next up, we've got Enzo. Uh, Enzo is S. I put Enzo in my tier list at S tier when I first made a bossing tier list. He's still in S. Uh, Enzo has Supply Moisture, but better, um, which increases your crit chance more than Supply Moisture. Plus, he gets a weak point buff. Plus, he provides your team with infinite ammo. He's not in support tier because he is a much higher DPS than any of our support characters. 
Um, he melts bosses solo. He helps your team melt bosses. Um, the highest, fastest clears in the game right now on Gluttony all have an Enzo on their team um, because he brings not only so much team damage to his team, but also to himself. Um, and that's why Enzo is in S tier. Also, there's a lot of mechanics where you need to shoot a lot of things. Obstructor, Molten Fortress. You really don't want to be reloading. You don't want to be running out of ammo. Enzo surprises your entire team with infinite ammo. Uh, he's like Glay, but less selfish. Next up, we've got Blair. Uh, Blair's pretty good with crit weapons. Uh, he can buff up his weapons to do more crit chance, crit damage. He has his like transcendent module that turns his four into a 6,000 damage multiplier ability. Uh, which is kind of gnarly, um, but once again, he's an ability spammer, and I think he's in a worse ability spammer than Viesa is, um, so we're going to be putting him in C tier, uh, just conditionally less useful. Um, then we've got Jaber. Jaber's got healing turrets, um, which can be very nice for your team. He's not a support because he can put out some DPS. Uh, he is still significantly nerfed from what he used to be in the betas and pretty buggy, uh, so we're going to be putting him in D tier. Next up, this is probably going to be a controversial one, uh, but we're going to be putting Bunny. Well, I'm not going to say yet, but Bunny has high voltage. Uh, it allows her to put out passive damage. Uh, she's hitting 2 million ticks with high voltage. Passive damage while also shooting her guns. A lot of our other ability casters have to be um, kind of using their abilities all the time. Uh, Bunny has passive damage while she's flying around with an SMG. She's also, uh, unlike a lot of these other descendants, conditionally best in slot for a lot of fights for example if you go into an obstructor fight and you are high voltage bunny you can carry a team of four without letting a single orb get next to obstructor uh it's kind of crazy she helps out on tons of fights and she puts out good damage um yes her like reputation in like public games is not all that great um but if you are properly specking her and properly building her uh, she can melt bosses and she's conditionally some of the best uh, to use for certain fights. So we're going to be putting her in A tier. Next up, we've got Freyna. Now, Freyna, in order to melt bosses with her four, needs to use so much damage. She needs all of the crit mods. She needs, like, maximized power. She needs um, maximized skill. You get her four on, like, a two-minute cooldown, and you need to jump off the cliff if you want, if you, like, fail. Like, you have to be playing her in solo. Otherwise, you're jumping off cliffs to use her, her four. Um, and her four does do really good damage. Uh, it is, is, it is one of the stronger bossing abilities in the game. Um, but, uh, in order to get that damage, she's sacrificing so much quality of life where all of these other characters do that much damage without having to do that. Um, and so we're going to be putting her in C tier. I think she's a better bosser than Blair. Um, but she, uh, in order to really juice up her four, uh, you have to full send it, and also in the current modding system, like, you're basically foregoing your mobbing build if you're going to do that, and I, I prefer Freyna as a as a mobber as a, rather than a bosser, uh, and I think she's conditionally less useful than Viesa. Uh, there's only one boss in the entire game right now that's, like, actually weak uh, to Toxic. I'm pretty sure it's just Executioner, uh, so she's, like, also conditionally less useful than some of these other characters. Uh, then we get Lepic. Lepic is definitely S tier. Uh, he is like one of the strongest bossers in the entire game. He's not the best in slot bosser for every boss, uh, but solo melts just on consistency. He's ridiculous. Uh, the damage that this character puts out is honestly disgusting. Um, and I think personally, I would rate him as the best bosser in the game. Next up, we've got Kyle. Kyle was S tier on uh, August 1st. Now that it is no longer August 1st, uh, Kyle is now D tier. Uh, Kyle, unless they add, like, an aggro draw system, is not overly helpful with his shields. Uh, he uh, currently is, like, bugged to not be able to res enemies while he's wearing his shield out. Uh, his four does hit four 20 million on mobs, but it hits for, like, five million on bosses, uh, which is very disappointing. Uh, you have to charge up your resource in order to be able to use it. Uh, he's just... Not that great for bossing anymore. Uh, but, you know, he does have a four, and the four does do big numbers on mobs, so that looks really cool. Next up, we've got Esimo. Uh, Esimo is also in D tier. <laughs> I really want this character to be better. Uh, they've got some really cool potential for really high burst damage synergies uh, with their transcendent modules. Uh, however, they're just kind of lacking in damage. Um... I saw a Reddit post saying that they put out like 44 million damage on Gluttony with Esimo using their transcendent rolls. 
Uh, I checked. I was doing 44 million damage on support Eugen. Uh, just shooting my guns. I, I really think this character needs some love for bossing. Um, so yeah, we got SEMO in D tier. And lastly, we have Glay. Uh, we're going to be putting Glay as our second best bosser in the game. Uh, Glay, you could argue, is the best bosser. Uh, but uh, she is just always good. I don't think she's always the best, uh, but she's always good uh, with her Massacre build. She's got Demonic Modification that hits really hard. Uh, she's got Infinite Ammo Rocket Launcher. She's got just using, like, ridiculous broken weapons like Greg's Reverse Fade. Uh, there's just so much she's good with uh, versus, like, Lepic is, you know, uh, he is really, really strong against certain bosses that are susceptible to his abilities, and he's the best bosser against those bosses. Glay is just always good uh, there's never a boss that you're going to be taking a glay into that you're not going to be putting yourself at an advantage all right now we have the final tier list so for this uh i basically went and uh took our data from our first two tier lists uh which were our like mobbing and bossing tier lists and i gave all of the descendants a score uh, based off of their rank in mobbing and bossing, if they were better in mobbing, they got a, or like the highest tier got ones, the lowest tiers got like fours or fives. Um, and then I put them into a spreadsheet and added their mobbing score to their bossing score. Um, and this is the overall tier list of our best descendants. Um, so this includes mobbing and bossing. This is kind of just how it like appeared after my like, uh, mobbing list and my bossing list. I did like order them a little bit um, because you know some of them were like tied with at four points, and some of them were tied at five points. Um, and for the support tier for bossing, we just gave them all worth worthwhile of B points. Uh, so they were B tier, so that they got three points. Uh, so that's why you see the B tier kind of being the three support characters or kind of all of the support characters, just kind of how it worked out. Um, but for overall, uh, Bunny ended up being our best descendant, the only one that received a score of three. I think that's pretty fair. Um, Bunny, not the best bosser, but she's very good at bosses, and she is by far and away just the absolute best mobber. Uh, she is in a league of her own, and when most of the game is farming, uh, I think that makes her very, very valuable, and I think it's a very fair rating for her to be an S. Uh, we've got our A tier, which I absolutely agree with. Glay, Lepic, Valby, and Viesa are fantastic descendants, and I think this makes up a really strong top five uh, descendants in the first descendant. Um, all of these characters are both good at mobbing and bossing, which is why they're ranked so highly in our all-around tier list. When we get to a B tier, uh, we've got characters that are very strong supports uh, and also decent on their own. Um, with like Ajax, Luna, Eugen, and Enzo all being very solid characters to play, and obviously Eugen being the strongest of the bossers on that list. Uh, then we've got our C tier. Our C tier are DPSs that, in my opinion, need a little bit of love, uh, that like really have to just full invest into their abilities to be able to be like super valuable obviously with sharon uh she's pretty solid with all of her weapons but we rated her very poorly for mobbing and so that's why she's in our overall c tier obviously this list is not taking into account her ability to infiltrate outposts where if this was an infiltration for outposts she would be the best uh it is not uh i know that she is incredibly valuable for that uh so obviously like in terms of like her value in the game i definitely would rate her higher but that is not what we were taking into account for this list. And then lastly, we've got our D tier uh, in terms of this is the tier that I think they really need to look at for buffing, why they buffed, um, like the, the the max range of Valby and Blair seemed a little bit weird. I'd love for some more buffs to these characters. Uh, we've got Jaber, we've got Esimo, and we've got Kyle. Obviously, Kyle was really good for a day. Uh, Jaber was really good in the betas. He needs a little bit of a buff. And uh, SEMO, I would love to see some more interesting or buffed trans, uh, trans mods and also just buffed damage on his abilities uh, or kind of slightly maybe a rework. I don't think there's any reason why his two needs to be on cooldown to detonate his explosives. So many times I'm putting down explosives and I can't even detonate them before some freaking bunny or Valby or someone nukes them. And then uh, I don't know. I just I really think this character needs a little bit of love. But yeah, that is my overall descendant tier list. 
That is it for the video. And once again, this is just for fun. These are my opinions. Your opinions may differ. Uh, these are my personal experiences with the game. And I hope that you can use this list as a way to inform you uh, if you're looking for what descendant to farm um, or also just this was kind of just for fun. Uh, and I hope you found it entertain, uh, entertaining. I'll catch you all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.